Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bible class. I am Dr. Marvin Booker, and welcome to Dr. Marvin. And in today's uh, study, we're going to be studying on the book of Genesis, and Genesis chapter 1. And in this book, we're going to be reviewing some things. Uh, since COVID, we kind of, you know, been shut down, but trying to get back to it and trying to get back to all of the things that we've been missing out on. And um, I hope I can get some listeners in because I need everybody to, to learn that, that know me. All right, let me get straight here. All right. So, here we are in the book of Genesis. Just to let you know that when we think about Genesis, we're looking at the book of beginnings. This book of beginnings. Now, it's not the beginning of God. No. It's the beginning of when God created the earth. It's the earth history. It's our history, our relationship. And God is now trying to establish a relationship with mankind. Yet he has some other things that manifest who he is. And I and I'm, want you to know that he is somebody special. And he should be special to you. So we're going to dive right in and not to hold too much of the time. But hopefully if we finish in time, there are going to be some questions. It's going to be a lesson, a little study. Uh, like I normally do after every Bible study class. I'm going to have some questions that I want you to take. So get out your pen and your paper. When you, at the end of this, we're going to get you to answer some of those questions. And then with those answers, and I wasn't able to bring it up, but just remember to write down Dr. M. Booker at gmail.com. That's doctor, like the whole word doctor, M. Booker at gmail.com. Give me for my speech. And that way, I, and, and then I want you to do, when you submit that, e when you go to my email, I want you to have somebody to uh, take the test for you and let them submit your score. And we're going to name the person or the first 10 people and share their scores on next week's broadcast, okay? Okay, let's dive again. In the book of Genesis, we find that this is the beginning. Now, we look at, first of all, the book of Genesis, the author has been subscribed to Moses because of some of the scriptures that really points to some of the sayings and the writings that Moses was jotting down whatever God told him to write down. So, But we look at Moses as being the author of this book. Now, I was so in a hurry today, I forgot <laughs> some of my notes, so I'm going to wing it today, but I'll be more organized the next time, so please forgive me. So I'm looking at chap uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Notice it said, God created. But we can stop where it says God. Theology is the study of God. There are so many things I can just say about God alone when we're talking about Genesis because some don't believe that there's a God. Then you got theories of how creation started by evolution, the Darwin theory, and many other things. Even theories of that man came from the amoeba or came from an ape, a monkey, those animal families. But God is not trying to prove anything in this Bible. He just sits it out there and it's just up for us to believe. How are we going to believe? By going forward and trying to search out really are these things true? For us who have been born again, we find out that, hey, it was something in us. It was like God calling us. You got to remember, if God, even if you're watching this broadcast, 
more than likely God has called you or he is calling you right now. But how does that take place? Well, one, God chooses a person to introduce himself to. And number two, there are people that have been prayed for ahead of time by the believer's world or the Christian world, meaning somebody prayed for me, for God to be able to introduce himself, for God to protect me through those times that I did foolish things. It was somebody's prayers that I hung on that I was able to connect with the creator of this world. So in the beginning, it was God that created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says. And then it says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then it says, and the Spirit of God move upon the face of the waters. First of all, we find out the earth was without form. It wasn't really, uh, it was in the making. It was just the beginning. It was in stage one. And now we find some, another mystery. One, we find that the second verse talks about the spirit hovering, the spirit of God. We talk about the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They all make God. Yet they act in different ways. When we talk about the spirit as a side note, as you go through life, the spirit is God who always is in action. He's getting things done. You pray for something, he's going to answer that prayer. He gets something done about that prayer, whether or not you see it manifest or see it happen. Or you don't. Just believe that God is working on our behalf when you believe in him. So the spirit was hovering. That's action. Hovering over another mystery. Waters. So now it's describing waters. Where did that water come from? Okay. That's in the book. When you start taking things slowly. And see, before, you know, we already have prayed, you know, I, I would start it off with a prayer, but I've already prayed about the Lord helping us with this, with his word. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to ask the spirit of God or ask the father to help you understand the word because you can't do it like a, a novel or an everyday book because it's not an ordinary book. It's not ordinary words. This is God's way of reaching out and trying to have a relationship with us. But there's a mystery to him. There's a mystery. Where's, where's this water coming from? It's there. Keep that in mind. It says, move upon the face of the water. Verse 3, and he said, and the first thing God said is, let there be light. And guess what? The light was made by the Spirit of God because Verse says, and there was light. Now you got light. This first day one, we got light. It said, God saw the light, that it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. Look at that. He divided the light from the darkness. So, also, metaphorically in a way, we find that the light can be spiritually seen as an eye, a spiritual eye opening. Or the light can be Jesus. I am the truth. I am the life. And he's the light which is in all men, according to John 1. It is light that has been separated from darkness. Because in verse 5, verse 4, not to get ahead of myself. And God saw the light that it was good and divided. And God divided the light from the darkness. We know God is pure light. And that's what he does in our lives. He takes, when he comes into your life, he takes that dark side out, out of your life. He's trying to get rid of those dark issues that we have. 
Sometimes a lot of us have it deep. We're deep in our, our misfortunes. We're deep on some bad habits, some bad ways, some bad thoughts. Whether it's of ourselves or whether somebody made us that way. Or it may be the company that we keep it. God takes us when he comes to our life to separate it. Because he said the light is good. So he took that light and separated from darkness. It's like he's separating the good from the evil. Can I get a witness? I ain't trying to preach, trying to teach. Verse 5 said, and he called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. So we see light versus darkness, but it's just light. You can see. In that dark, in the evening time, it's dark. It's just light and day. And it's saying nothing about the sun, nothing about the moon yet. Light and day. Verse 6 says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Remember the waters that was in the beginning that we don't know of? So it divided itself. Now we got waters up and water down. And he said, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament, verse 7, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Above and below. And God called the firmament heaven. And in the evening were morning well, the second day. So he's dealing with the water. He's dealing with the light and the darkness on the second day. And said, and it was so. Now, verse 9 said, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let there and let the dry land appear. And it was so. The water was already there, but now appear out of nowhere is earth, land. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. So the water above was heaven. So that must be the atmosphere. The water below is now our lakes, ponds, streams, and oceans and seas. And now he's got the dry land surrounded and all. Look at God creating all of this, his masterpiece. Look at our God and who we believe. Look what he can do. Look at his power. Okay, so he called it earth. Verse 11, and he said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. I'm reading from the King James Version. So now he's creating the grass, the field, all of these trees, you know, Pears, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, you know, grass. And so he saw it and he said, and it was so. And verse 12 said, and the earth brought forth grass, herd, herd yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the morning and the evening were the third day, ending at the 13th verse. Seed. God was putting seed in things. So seed means a life after a life. See that? God is bringing in life, brought in the grass to have life, and the life to continue with a seed being formed. Life after life, 
Some of the scriptures say, I'm not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. God loves life. That's why we should embrace life while we are here on earth. For that purpose he made it for. He made it for us to enjoy with him and to share it with one another in animal life. Look at God. Just a sharing being, sharing, supreme being, sharing. My Lord. And that was the third day. Okay, day three. And now we're going to the fourth day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament under the heaven to divide, or the firmament of the heaven, I'm sorry, to divide the day from the night and let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So now God is putting a time on the earth. Calculations of time. Seasons. Days. Months. Years. It's the calendar of years and days. 15 says, and let there be for let them let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God said it. It happened. If God says something's going to happen in your life. It's going to happen when he speaks. It has already been spoken. It's already done. A lot of times when we pray for something in particular. And we're walking in the will of God. It's in meaning that when we say we're walking in the will of God, it's the same thing God would pray for. His son would pray for. So how is he going to avoid that? So you might as well all, already consider it done. Just consider it done. And just start saying, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all what you already did. Lord, I thank you because I prayed for it. And I thank you that you're going to answer that prayer for me. Just put it in the hands of God. Because the Bible said, he said it, and it was so. Verse 16, and he made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Look at that when we look up. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Look at that. All the lights. And to rule over the day, over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Magnificently good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. On day four. Make the greater lights, all the lights for the earth itself. As if earth is his baby, his, his masterpiece. Fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature. Listen, the waters. The moving creatures that have life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created them whales. And every living creature that moved it, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And look, and every wing fowl, this is verse 21, and every wing fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and Fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth in the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So out of the, wa in the water in and out of the water came things. In the water, we got whales, we got fish, we got eels, we got all types, we got dolphins and stuff. We don't know what they looked like back then when God first created all type of sea creatures. And then out of the water came the birds, the fowl of the air flying. 
That's why some birds look like they got fish eyes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Birds coming from the water and not from dry land. Keep that in mind. And the evening in the morning was the fifth day. And God said, let the earth, here come day six, and let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. The earth now. You got the way the water. Now, see, earth, the water was first. Just like in the beginning, that water comes from the and So he creating it. Here comes the earth. He said in verse 24, and he said, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind cattle and every and, and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind and it was so and God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and God saw that it was good the cattle the beast of the field the crawling thing whether it's a spider a snail a skunk, a snake, a cow, a buffalo. God created all these creatures. A giraffe, a lion, tiger, panther, bear. God created, oh my. God created them all. Still on the sixth day, right here in verse 26, baby. And God said, let us Make man, us, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Let us stay grouping together. <laughs> Come on, let's get together and finish this project. He said, let us make man, meaning mankind, in our image. This is a beautiful verse. And after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Because they represent us. Hallelujah, somebody. Over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. He covering it all. That means man has the potential and the endorsement by God to dominate the earth. Why? Because he's made in his image and his likeness mankind. Talking about a man and a woman. It ain't just said the male. That's what that man means, mankind. In verse 27, say God created man in his own image. Again, it, it just reiterating it, supporting it. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Ain't no nothing. I don't care if you came out of laboratory. It's by the way of God through a man and a woman. Not Steve and Steve. Not Josh and Jacob. This is the truth. This is the Bible. Oh, hey, man. I'm preaching Bible. Not Liz and Linda. Not Susie and Sally. Not John and his dog. Not Keith and his parrot, but a man and a woman, not a man and an animal, not a man and a, and a chimpanzee. God created them in his eyes and his. And then he said in verse 28, he said, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Again, he's telling him, you're going to dominate. So I need you to make more of you. The more, the merrier. The more you in my will. You in my will. If you are in the will of God, even on this, if you are, see, some people got a problem. 
Well, some people having four, five, ten, fifteen, and twenty children, man. Don't, don't worry about that. You look to the law for your help. I'm talking about the believer now. Now, outside of being a believer. <laughs> but either way, God's going to take care of you. But you're on a good side. We ain't the will of God. You're just doing what the word says. But you consult God in all things, right? And you can say, Lord, you told me to. So help me. Help me with my children. Guide and lead me. All you're going to say, come close. Give me praise. That's all they're going to say. Give me praise. Get closer to me. Walk with me. Talk with me. Read. And tell your children. And tell your fellow man who is their God. No matter if it hurt, when I tell you to tell them or I bring them before you, you got to tell them. If you tell them, you're going to be blessed. When you're in the will of God, that's where all of your blessings come from. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be teaching, not preaching. So here, oh, I'm almost finished. My, my time's almost up. We're trying to get through it. All right. So he tells them to be fruitful, multiply. You're going to have dominion. And God said, behold. I have given you every, talking to the man and woman, I have given you every herb yield bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree which is in the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me, it shall be for you to survive and eat. And to, in verse 30, and to every beast of the field, and to every fowl of the air, and to every Thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given you every green herd for me, and it was so. So now he's talking to the animal, everything else. See, I gave you some leaves and all this other stuff for you to eat. He's talking to the animal. Look at God talk, just like you talk to your dog sometimes, or your cat sometimes, or your parrot sometimes, or, or your ferret. Sometimes, or your little mice, or your snaky snaky sometimes. God is better than Dr. Doolittle. So they understand. He can talk animal language. Look at our God. Look at our God. Look at our God. All right? And God saw, verse 31, in his ending, everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. It put a very on it. And said the evening and the morning were the sixth day. He created man on the sixth day. A special thing. Along with the cattle. Along with the beasts of the field. On the sixth day, man and woman. We special in his image. I know you want to be blessed. So today, that ends our lesson for today. I hope you got a thought. I hope you really found something that's in this word. I tell you to go back over it and read it for yourself. It can be a lot of things that can come out of this. But I want to kind of cover it, kind of an overview of it, verse by verse, because I just can't run through it too fast. Because you need some substance in your spirit. These lessons is to feed your spirit and feed your mind spiritually. You got to see it through a spiritual eye and be fed spiritually so that you can give yourself a chance to grow. How about that? Now, get out a pen and piece of paper and listen and watch as we go through what we just learned in review. Now, what I want you to do if you would, I told you to get the pen and paper before we started. But what I want you to do is get somebody else, if you can, to take this test for you. And then I want them to submit your first name to my email, Dr. M. Booker at gmail.com. And, and, tell, and, and uh, tell me what your test score is going to be after which we'll go over the answers okay so right now we're going to start to test off for the book of genesis chapter one book of genesis question or so question one who
who is identified as the author of the book of Genesis? Is it the 12 apostles of Jesus? The scientists of BC 5000? Moses? Or the apostle John of Revelation? What is your answer? Who is identified as the author of the book of Genesis? Question two. Man was created before, uh, before God created everything. Man was created before God created everything. True or false? Uh-oh, trying to get my question through. I may have lost my question three. I have to bring that back. Okay, let's go to question four. Maybe I can see it somewhere. Question four, in chapter one, what was already there before God created the heavens and the earth? Was it the moon and the stars? Was it the Big Bang Theory? Was the it the amoeba? Was it the water? Or was it purgatory? In chapter one, what was already there before God created the heaven and the earth? Question five. In this chapter, Mr. Vert, in this chapter, what day was man created? Y'all got to forgive me. I was in a big rush today to try to get this too excited, I reckon. In chapter one, what day was man created? Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, or day seven? Question six, God also made the monkey in his likeness and in his image. Is that true or false? God also made the monkey in his likeness and in his image. Question seven. God commanded all the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air to be fruitful and to multiply and fill the earth, except for the man and the woman. True or false? Question seven. God created all the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, except for the man and the woman. True or false? Question eight. Y'all keeping up? <laughs> in the beginning, God made them blank and blank in his likeness and in his image. Again, in the beginning, God made them blank and blank in his likeness and in his image. Was it male and animal? Was it female and female? Was it male and male? Was it angels and demons? Was it male and female? Or was it animal and female? Was it male and male? I mean, male and animal, female and female, male and male, angels and demons, male and female, animal and female. Question nine. When God saw everything he made, he said it was blank. He said it was awful. 
or he said it was fit for a do-over. He said it was detestable. He said it was good. He said it was nasty. Or he said it was all right. Right? My goodness. All right, the first thing that God created was the stars, nature, the moonlight, the water. Now, I'm going to have to give you 10 on then I, I, I did a typo. Something must have jumped in there. Okay. The first thing that God created was stars, nature, the moonlight, the water. So if you can give me the quick, the right answer to that, although I have a typo, I give you an extra 10 on it. <laughs> okay, the first thing God created was, and I'll reveal that coming back. So get your answers together. All right? That person, don't don't try to change nothing. And submit it to Dr. D O C T O R M Booker at gmail.com with your name and your test score. Top 10, we're going to list those top 10 people on next week's broadcast. I hope you enjoyed it today. But since I didn't have question three, that's an extra 10 points. How about that? Give you an extra 10 points on that one. I just, I guess I got just got too happy for the Dr. Marvin program. So I, I'm thanking you for tuning in today as I get started again on the Bible study and lessons. And I hope that we can all grow together and live together in harmony for the sake of Jesus Christ. So have a blessed night and tell somebody that you love them. God bless you.